Oh, hello, welcome to uh, something no one really asked for, but it's an interview uh, with Patrick Gleason, one of the members of Out of the Basement podcast. Uh, we're going to just go through some questions with him uh, and uh, see how things are going. Basically, you give it a little bit more in-depth look at one of the guys who started the Out of the Basement podcast. Uh, so, uh, Patrick, uh, welcome, and uh, perhaps you can just tell us where you uh, got your start gaming and, and how. All right, well, when did I first start gaming? Uh, that's back in uh, grade 11, because I got out way back in the day. Um, buddy of mine, uh, Eric Labelle, uh, and uh, other Albert Sauvé, uh, there's a couple others, Claude, and a couple other people that joined in, but they were, we were just basically three of us. Yeah, we started with Dragon Quest, actually, not not D&D or first D&D or even AD&D. We did this Dragon Quest, which was actually pretty in... in pretty inventive uh, game. Uh, I liked it better at the time because it gave you a lot more options to do than just be, uh, you know, fighter barbarian or stuff like that. Uh, actually, barbarian didn't wasn't there for really D and D. Sorry, just <laughs> trying to bring back memories here. Um, the Dragon Quest is pretty good. Uh, actually, Eric still does stuff with it. He's uh, been doing some coding for uh, getting wizardry with uh, Dragon Quest, you know, sort of characters and stuff like that. Um, He's actually been carrying the torch for Dragon Quest a long time on the internets and stuff. And uh, if you want, I can send you some links to to put it, the tag in the uh, the video there. And uh, it was good. You, you uh, it, your manual dexterity matter, moder, uh, mattered for how to hit, and agility mattered to be dodgy and stuff like that, as opposed to uh, strength mattering for you know being able to hit better. Your weapons uh, style was limited to different. Uh, levels like obviously for a uh, small little dagger you could get very very good with it high levels so with it but the two-handed sword you're more limited because there's only so many you know it, it, they figure there's only so many things you could do with two-handed sword and yeah, but there's a whole bunch of things your armor was based on uh, what you're wearing uh, it, it didn't make you harder to hit it absorbed damage uh, what made you harder to hit was your agility but again if you wore too much armor then you're not as agile so you're giving up you know not being able to hit for taking the damage. Their magic system was actually pretty interesting as well. They had different types. They had summoners, celestial magics, <sighs> even, uh, you know, say, uh, I can't remember all the ways, but holy jeez, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, then we did switch into D&D uh, later on to give it a try, and that's where I just, and then from there, when I went to university at Carleton with the uh, Strategy Club, that's where I got more into different types of board games, you know, the, even the cheesy ones like Naval Wars <laughs> and stuff like that, and uh, Champions, D&D, big, were the big ones, they also the, you know, Villains and Villagiantes, V and V, Bushido, all the old games that that were coming out at the time because it was the eighties, you know, mid eighties and uh, start of nineties was a huge influx of games coming out uh, of role playing games. So those were those were sort of the the heyday in, in my mind of uh, of role playing games. Well, for uh, Dragon Quest, we will put a uh, information at the uh, link area. For people to take a look at, uh, it was from SPI. It was originally a game it got bought out by uh, TSR. Now Wizards of the Coast, you know Hasbro, going through. Uh, now, what about your most memorable campaigns you've been in, or people who have run run you through different games? My favorite campaigns I've been in. Well, I think. Since I've been gaming for thirty some years, it's uh, quite a lot there. Um, but yeah, let's just see here. So well, I'll, I'll go. There's there's uh, been so many, but some of the ones that that stick out are, are important to me. Or I'd have to go back again and say Eric Labelle running um, the the AD and D one. That's where he uh, he, he changed uh, you know the modules and stuff. Because I've never been like I said, big fan of modules. I always uh, like to do my own sort of. Uh, adventures and build on them like you do a module and then the next module you start and you're the same as you were before there has been no change in the world and that's why I like role-playing games that are done in campaign style as opposed to video games because there is a progression of not just your character but of the world so in the uh, advanced D&D &D, I was running a ranger and Nidic uh, put us through uh, 
it the Barrows of Reston Ford or something like that. Basically, where you you go and rescue a, you know, the, the Baroness's the Baron's daughter, and save her from well, zombies or ghouls or something I can't remember, but something like that. And anyways, I was the human. Uh, Albert, I think, was the elf, and there was a dwarf, and that. So I was the only human ranger. And then it did the thing of, well, if you save the damsel in distress, there's a chance that, you know, she could marry you or love you and then fall in love with you and marry you. So did a charisma roll. Yes, she fell in love with me. We got married. So then now I was the, you know, heir. Well, she was heir, but I was the heir. Once the baron died, I became, you know, baron. Um, which is interesting because I had a base. I was able to, we started doing, like, not tax, well, a little bit of basic taxation and stuff like that to uh, to keep my character going. And we had a base of all the time, and we just started doing adventures from there. So it didn't run too long, but it was it was the very first one that we're, we didn't stick to basic modules, but had, you know, stories continue and grow in the world. Oh, then in, in, University and at past university, there was a few as well. Uh, Steve uh, and Tanko ran a few. One was, uh, well, Villains and Vigilantes uh, in Bushido. Bushido was actually one of the very few times I played a female character. Um, normally I just play males because it's just, I'm, you know, I'm a guy. Not that there's a huge difference for a lot of things between men and women, but there is still, you know, I don't know how a woman thinks or goes through things, so I've never played a woman. Um, Except for Bushido, where I was uh, Eiko, the, the peasant martial arts artist. And uh, and that ran for a while. It was a lot of fun. Again, you know, base modules a little bit, but, you know, building upon that. Uh, the other one that Steve ran, uh, so it was V&V, where, uh, you know, superhero game. Uh, although I was bigger into champions, uh, I'll explain more later. The other one was Dragonlance. We did D&D for the longest time, and uh, Steve ran the entire Dragonlance uh modules. Uh, we did not do the pre-gen. We tried. It didn't work well. We ended up dead or in jail. So we made our own characters, and we went from there, and that's, again, where it was interesting, because we don't... The rules are there, but we changed them. Uh, way back in the day, you were more limited, especially with D&D, you're limited to what the classes you can be and, and stuff like that. Uh, so we, we changed it off. The, also, there's a Patrick Callan ran a long time... Um, um, D&D campaign later on through Carl Marwick, but, it, you know, uh, again, just continuing on for D&D that would play here and there, play every so often, and just the characters kept, you know, increasing and going on. Um, the other one would be, oh, yes, Ian, uh, Ian Walsh ran a Warhammer uh, fantasy game, uh, not Warhammer K, but way back when, uh, Warhammer for, uh, fantasy before it went into the newer sort of, I guess, card board game type, uh, was definitely based again on Tolkien, but it was sort of put in uh, Middle Ages Europe of sorts. I mean, the, the it was there was a map of of Europe was where it was based, and it was sort of Germany and well Prussia and stuff like that. It, it, it wasn't really Earth, but it was sort of you know Earth with uh, incursions of chaos. And again, Ian uh, would would introduce his own rules, his own classes, or career class for Warhammer, and I, 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 uh, it was enjoyable. Long time running. The other one would be, I guess, Eric uh, Groen ran a massive Pendragon campaign. It was heavily influenced by uh, Marian Ziver Bradley, you know, Mist of Avalon and that, and other books. And it was very political, and, and but still, you're playing knights uh, during the days of Arthur, but it wasn't just, okay, you go kill the giant or you go kill these guys. There there was marriages, dynasties being set up, uh, you know, kingdoms. Uh, one of the guys, Sean, had a, was actually the king and we were his followers. And again, it's just it, lots of fun. It, it's, as long as you have some good guys, that's the big one. Um, a friend of mine, uh, another friend, obviously, uh, uh, Paul Gilligan, who actually has the... Uh, uh, Pooch Cafe thing. He uh, he ran way back when. He ran uh, Cthulhu campaign, which was uh, a lot of fun. Just nineteen you know twenties pulp horror, uh, based on you know H.P. Lovecraft's uh, Cthulhu, obviously. And lately, while well, there was uh, Devram from the out of 
pod, out of the basement podcast as well. He ran a Star Wars campaign that uh, went for quite a while and 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 was a lot of fun. Uh, like, again, yeah, they were all fun, but they're memorable because again, you know, changing things, modifying here and there. And uh, my guy was the failed Jedi who had been trained originally by Darth Vader to hunt down other Jedi's, and then switched over, and, and of course it had a you know, money up and again in his head because, you know, Darth wanted him back. And there, there you know, it just, we uh, did runs and we built up our spaceships and everything. And it was a lot of fun. Though, though, like I said, those ones were all good because you don't stick straight to the modules and we ran for as long as we could and, and enjoyed them. So I want to thank those people for helping make uh, all my uh, gaming very enjoyable and still game with people like that nowadays. So it's, it's been fun. That's quite a long history of gaming you have there. Now, how about yourself? Have have you run any long-term campaigns yourself? And what are some of the ones that you, you've preferred or, you know, not liked as much? Well, the games I have played have been a ton. I mean, like I said, when the, uh, back in the, the 80s and 90s, there was a heyday of role-playing games and bought a lot and tried them. Once I've run a lot, though... The, done massive campaigns in uh, champions back in, you know, university days and a little bit past there, I'd, I'd run. I ran a lot of people and sometimes just a lot of solo uh, running of champions. Very enjoyable. I did a uh, Babylon uh, 3? Babylon 3? Babylon 4? Babylon 3 um, scenario. Where you know the the from the game from the sorry the TV series uh, Babylon Five, in that uh, canon in that there Babylon Three had been destroyed by a uh, bomb, so I went and ran people back through Babylon Three where there were members of the crew um, involved with that, and it got interesting <laughs> where some some people were uh, taking power with their own hands and and making decisions they may not have. Uh, wisely uh, taken. Uh, I also did a DD and d one um, Birthright where this was d and ds attempt to run kings and nobles and those who controlled vast guilds as opposed to just adventurers. It was an interesting system because you were tied into the land uh, for the belief, for the magic, or for the guilds and that helped give you power. Uh, I'm trying to remember lots. So it was all, uh, again. It was it was an interesting take because they didn't want you to. You're still supposed to do adventures because D and D is not set up for really for experience for just doing running countries. But it was an interesting take. It was it was fun and it helped me learn a bit for doing later on the Pendragon stuff that I have been running for on and off. I have run a few different Pendragon ones. I have run the standard. You know, knights during the king times of King Arthur. I was doing one where they were involved with Irish knights, since and uh, that with the Fey. Then now, like I said, as we've mentioned a few times down at the basement podcast, I've been running a uh, Roman campaign. The days just before Rome was leaving Britain and the the expulsion thereof of the Roman legionnaires, they decided to stay, which you know, of course changed history. Now that there's, you know, the Roman camp, uh, Roman legionnaires there that are trying to do training and, and keep the Roman discipline, organization, and structure around. And it's needs to turn into sort of a, uh, a war also against the Roman Catholics because most of the uh, players were, well, they're not Catholic to start with, or, or Roman Catholic. They were Mithras followers from the ancient days of uh, the Roman legion. Or depict, obviously, you know, true heathenism, uh, Germanic boy, you know, uh, Mithros, and so yeah, there's there's been uh, the big change as you know, Roman Catholic Catholicism does not get involved in Britain at all, and that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, we're on to some people's second generation, second kids. Uh, they've run all about thirty some odd years of of game time. I've been running. Deadlands is another one I've really enjoyed running. That's the sort of spaghetti western with meat. Imagine sort of, I guess, sort of supernatural and buffy in the old west. 
there's there's critters out there that you're trying to stop and hunt down. Uh, that one actually came to pretty much well an end, although it could be picked up again. I, I, I did the uh, the finish off of the the campaign in quite a way. The heroes were saving the day from the hordes of evil, and we left it there. Now again, it can pick up again if I get in the mood to to run again and do that. I also did the uh, Warhammer Fantasy one as well, where I ran the uh, the Stone, the Doomstones of Chaos, I think it was. There's a whole, again, a whole uh, mega adventures for the fan Warhammer Fantasy. And from there, I just, uh, again, modified things and, and played around with the rules. And uh, Eric, you know, Eric Rowan, Chris Dansbury, Devram, uh, Patrick, Steve, uh, and, and that were in, involved with this. And we played for years, you know, on and off, because you can't uh, always play every single weekend, same game. And uh, then I said, like, Champions, that's pretty much the ones I've run and really had kept going for a long, long time. I've tried other different games here and there. And Nominate's another one I, uh, I enjoyed. It's uh, from a from France game originally that I brought over and translated into English, where you play angels. Uh, you follow one of the archangels for a word, and you're, there's demons, obviously. There's different ways to run it. They can have it where you're sort of work. You know, you, you, you're not against the demons. You're trying to save humanity, but you don't fight the demons off the bat. They wanted to play more old-style Old Testament. So they were the wrath and fury of God bringing his, uh, his wrath and judgment to the world. It led to some interesting, uh, interesting times. Oh, yeah. So, right now, I said I'm not doing too much, uh, just besides the Pendragon, which is uh, hard to do, because one of the people now is over in England, and it's hard to get together uh, regularly. So, but uh, I'm hoping to do a couple more in the summertime, and uh, see what other games come up, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, again, quite a varied amount of gaming you have there. Well, what we'll do is we'll uh, run in a time right now, so next time we'll look at the comics and movies perhaps for you. Well, thanks for coming out, and uh, everyone, have a good one. Thank you.